Ipsy, uh, I, I think it's at a run rate of more than $80 million a year right now. Yes. So it's huge. And you were 19 when you started this. Waitressing, I believe, couldn't get a job at a makeup counter because <laughs> you didn't have sales experience. What is your goal now? Because you've got so many businesses that you've built around this YouTube following you've, you've built. My goal now is to continue expanding my business um, here stateside and also globally. Um, Asia is a market that I'm very interested in. I was in uh, Beijing, China two weeks ago meeting with uh, all of uh, the different people who are investing a lot in technology. So um, meeting and seeing how the market there is expanding is something that I'm also very interested in. It's interesting to see you move into, you have subscription beauty products, you have yes. a whole host of companies as John mentioned, but we're in a time period where if you just wanted to do YouTube, you could probably make an honest living and a good Absolutely. one at that on YouTube. Absolutely. How did you decide, why did you decide to branch off of that platform and do more? Um, well, I mean, I've been on YouTube for almost eight years, so it's been a while. You know, <laughs> online space, that's a very long time. It's like doggy years. I feel like I've been there for 20 years, and I love YouTube. YouTube is a platform that I'm still going to continue uploading my content. However, um, I wanted to also expand my business and try other things and, and not just focus on YouTube, but you know, launch other businesses that are outside of YouTube, still using YouTube as a place for me to upload my content because that's where a lot of my subscribers are. I was are. gonna ask you, if is there any other platform that you think is competitive or that you might start migrating to if YouTube starts to outlive its usefulness? Well, to be honest with you, um, I go wherever my um, subscribers and my community is. So if they're on another platform, I'll go there too. For example? Um, for example, Facebook now is becoming very popular for video search and video content. Um, right now there's no monetization, but I wouldn't be shocked if uh, they enabled monetization for content creators because um, that will enable more people to upload more original content on Facebook. So Facebook is a place where a lot of people now are watching videos. Um, Vine, as you guys know, people love just getting lost on Vine and going through the Vine black hole and finding these seven second videos that are easy to digest. Do you have a role model at all? Because you're, you've kind of become a, a tastemaker, a curator. You're looking at a music label. You're, yes. you're now looking at uh, being a, a repository of talent going out to YouTube. Is it Oprah? Is it somebody else? <laughs> it's my mom. <laughs> no, that's, that's my, uh, that's my, my good answer I love you mommy um, <laughs> but Elon Musk is someone that I really look up to I think he is a very brilliant forward-thinking uh, businessman um, he started PayPal way back when no one really believed and understood what the internet was and I love how he took that money and reinvested it into Tesla SpaceX and solar energy and more um, so he's someone him? I haven't met him yet but I would love to meet you Elon Musk <laughs> <laughs> he also watches our show sometimes yeah. maybe That'll be just what you need to, to meet him. I'm wondering, do you think that there's a type of content that is the sweet spot for millennials? Because one of our friends, John Steinberg, was on here last week and he said, the millennial audience is the only one that I care about. Yes. And obviously you grew up in the internet age, you're perfect yes. to speak to them, but what type of content do you think works? What do they wanna consume? They wanna consume content that they can relate to and something that they can connect to. It's not like stuff that you would see that is overly produced or underproduced. It has nothing to do with production. It's all about that connection, having that two-way dialogue and relationship. So this is millennials, they, they want to be spoken to, they want to be heard, and they also want to have that dialogue. 